This is a 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro. It's the 2TB storage 16GB RAM model. It is the most powerful and ball quiveringly expensive iPad that Apple sells at the time of making this video. And this is the 8th gen iPad. It was released back in 2020, has an A12 Bionic chipset, 32GB of storage and 3GB of RAM. You can pick one of these up pre-owned for around about 200 quid or $200 right now. Both of these models run Logic Pro for iPad, but how does performance differ between the two? Let's find out. As you can imagine, in normal day-to-day -day use, the M2 Pro handles Logic Pro with no issues at all. I've enabled the CPU and memory monitor up at the top there, and it's nigh on impossible to get this to react at all, really. You can slap multiple CPU-heavy software instruments into a project and add lots and lots of effect plugins without Logic skipping a beat. In the demo project that comes with Logic Pro for iPad, Take A Day Trips Manzana, the CPU and memory monitor barely registers that anything is going on during playback. The M2 Pro eats larger projects for breakfast. This project has over 80 tracks and Logic is quite happily cruising along with zero issues. Completely unsurprising, yeah, this is Apple's flagship iPad and as such, you would expect it to run Logic Pro for iPad's demo project like a dream. But what about Logic Pro for Mac's demo project? You can quite easily bring across the Lil Nas X Montero project file from Mac to iPad. And opening it up, you can see it is quite a bit beefier than Manzana is. There are over 135 tracks here and loads of software instruments and plugins thrown into the mix as well. There is definitely a bit more going on in the CPU and memory monitor when compared to Logic for iPads demo project, but the M2 iPad Pro doesn't even come close to breaking a sweat really. Impressive stuff. On to the 8th gen iPad then, and it's worth noting that this iPad has an identical spec to the iPad mini 5th gen, so while I don't have that model to hand, you could expect similar performance from both models. This is officially the lowest spec iPad that will run Logic Pro for iPad, and as such, you'd expect there to be all kinds of issues, right? Well, not really actually. Kicking off with Logic Pro for iPad's demo project once again, keep your eye on the CPU meter as I play it back. It hits a much higher point than we saw on the M2 Pro model, and that carries over to the memory monitor too. Having said that, despite this project coming in at over 80 tracks and practically maxing out the iPad 8th gen's RAM, it still plays back with no issues. The 8th gen iPad doesn't perform quite as well when it comes to Logic Pro for Max demo project Montero. Immediately after loading the project up, before I can even try to set the project off even, a memory overload message pops up and I'll need to freeze some tracks before continuing. Interestingly, this doesn't seem to be a CPU limitation, as you can see from the monitor at the top there. It seems that if you stick to the excellently optimised stock Logic instruments and plugins, you'll have a mostly smooth experience with the 8th gen iPad. Throw a lot of tracks, instruments and effects into the mix, and you may have a few more issues. Seeing as we brought over Logic Pro for Max demo project to Logic Pro for iPad, let's see what happens when we bring across musicprod.com's system melting Logic Pro benchmark project. The idea behind it is you download the project file, load it up in Logic Pro on your Mac, and then see how many active tracks you can play back 
before your Mac throws up a system error. With the round trip functionality Apple have implemented with Logic Pro, we can actually load this desktop project in Logic for iPad. Now, the instructions on this site say to increase Logic's buffer size to max, which on Mac is 1024. On iPad, you can only increase the buffer size at the moment anyway to 512. It's also recommended that you manually choose the max amount of cores that your computer supports. You cannot manually do this on iPad, so we'll just have to run with the settings we have. For reference, I ran the benchmark on an M2 Pro Mac Mini. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 12 core CPU, 19 core GPU, and 200 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. It is a beast, and during the benchmark, with the buffer size set to 512, I was able to activate the maximum number of tracks in the project without Logic Pro on Mac kicking up any kind of error message. Let's see how these two iPad models measure up to that performance. Things start off well with the M2 Pro with no issues for the first 20 tracks or so. The CPU really starts to spike after that and in the end it manages to deal with around 35 activated tracks before giving up the ghost. The 8th gen iPad then. The project loads up, which is a good sign, but already even with just a couple of tracks enabled, you can see the CPU spiking. In fact, it only takes five active tracks to force a system overload, where logic will prompt you to freeze some tracks before continuing. I eventually managed to get three of these tracks playing without the iPad shouting at me. And that is how the base model 8th generation iPad stacks up against the top of the range M2 iPad Pro. I'm genuinely surprised at how usable Logic is on this older iPad model, and it goes to show how well optimized Apple's software and hardware really is. Having said that, some of the stock plugins that come with Logic Pro for iPad aren't as good as they could be. Watch this next for a guide on what stock plugins you should be using.